Hello there, on today's video I will explain the mechanic of every piece of accessory in Rise of Kingdoms, how they work, how they can affect your battles, analyzing the little details and answering your questions about them. It's an all-in video, divided in chapters because it might be a bit longer than usual, so if you are interested in something specific feel free to skip to the part of the video that you prefer. If you want to support this channel and my work for free, remember to drop a like and subscribe, it's 100% free and you can always change your mind later. Let's now begin with the analysis. Let's start off with the oldest legendary accessory, released first back in KVK2 as final reward for the winning team. The description says, 10% chance to gain a damage absorbing shield for 2 seconds when attacked. It can only trigger once every 5 seconds. First thing to know, the shield is 500 damage factor only. It means that if they deal you more damage than that, the coin is not going to absorb it. That's why many of you wanted to know why the effect of the coin was lasting for one turn. Well, because once it does the job, which is absorbing 500 damage factor, that's it. And it can happen over one turn or two turns. The chance of the coin triggering is particularly good for the simple fact that every march that attacks you directly, so with normal attacks, is giving you a 10% chance of activation. The function is easy to understand. It's 1 minus 0.9 at the x power multiplied by a 100 to obtain the percentage, where x represents the number of marches swarming you. If now I write down x equal 1, 1 player swarming, x equal 2, 2 players swarming, x equal 3, 3 players, etc., I will get some straight lines parallel to the y-axis, and the second coordinate of the intersection point between the lines and the curve will represent the percentage of the coin activating each turn basing on how many players are swarming you down. One player, 10% chance. Two players, 19% chance. Three players, 27.1. Four players, 34.4. Five players, 40%, and so on. For x tending to infinite, this curve will tend to 100, without ever touching it. So even if you have a couple billion marches swarming you down, which will never happen by the way, because probably your phone will just explode in your hands, there will still be a 0.000 etc something percent that the coin will not activate. Anyway, speculation aside, the actual chance is a bit lower than the one I just described, because after the coin activates, there is a cooldown happening, but I'm trying to simplify things as much as I can for you. Just know that after the first activation, there is a 5% cooldown, and on the 6th turn, you will have again the possibility to trigger that I have described before. The Horn of Fury. Excellent accessory, one of my favorites. Normal attacks have a 30% chance to gain an extra 50 rage. Definitely very useful, especially because it's a 30% chance, so in short battles it's going to be more consistent compared to a 10% chance to activate. There is no cooldown, so every attack will give you a 30% chance to restore 50 extra rage on top of what you get every turn, which is between 100 and 120 circa, depending on whether or not you're winning or losing the trade, but that's for another video. Plus the talent effects and eventually the skill effects. I have a chart here that S from our analysis team wrote down according to the rage tool that he built on Python. Basically he considered different commander pairings, the talents and the skill effects, and from that he knows what the average skill cycle is. His tool is going to simulate a million turns battle, and based on that he can see the effective improvement on the skill cycle of that combo over time. For example, the horn is great for Khan and Saladin, with a skill cycle improvement of 17%, and it's much less compelling, for example, on YSS and Theodora, with an improvement of barely 5%. I'm gonna maybe post a full document on my Discord sometime soon, so you will be able to see the percentage benefit on the most used combos with the horn. Join up, the link is in the description down below. The Pendant of the Eternal Knight. Well, not much to say about this honestly. 5% skill damage increase. 
The only thing I can specify is that this bonus is of course multiplicative and not additive, and I explain this concept extensively in another of my videos. The card is up on the top if you want to explore this concept more later. The Greatest Glory gives you an extra 5% normal attack damage. If you don't know that already, the normal attack buff is another multiplicative buff, in this case adding 5% on top of the normal damage that you deal. And I say normal damage because in one of my videos I spoke about that already, again card is up on the top. In short, normal attack means both attack and counter attack. If you check Joan of Arc 4th skill for example, Saint, and test with her as secondary commander, you will notice that both your attack and counter attack will be boosted by 25% on the battle log. Remember that the white number that you see on the top of the commander that you are attacking is already the final sum of attack and counter attack that you dealt on that specific turn. On the other side, this other item, the Vengeance, only affects the counter attack damage by 8%. You might now think that the Greatest Glory is better, but remember that you always deal counter attack damage to every march that's attacking you, while you can directly attack only one. So yeah, in a one versus one scenario, the greatest glory is definitely better in most of the cases, unless you have a super high counterattack damage march, like in case of Charles Martel and Harold. But in a swarm scenario, let's see how things change. Here you have a chart that I made for you where you can basically see that already in a two versus one scenario, the vengeance gives you 1% more benefit. And in every respectful scenario you get swarmed, no matter if you use Attila, Ramses or Guan. So I would personally always prefer the Vengeance over the Greatest Glory. Or maybe both for an Attila Takeda, why not? The Ring of Doom has been analyzed a lot on my channel as well. Normal attacks have a 10% chance to increase damage by 50% for 2 seconds can trigger up to 1 times in a 5 second period. Having a 10% chance with a cooldown means that effectively in a perfect scenario you will not have this item activating 1 time every 10 turns, so being active 2 turns every 10, but 1 activation every 14 turns circa, with an effective chance of activating of 7.14% according to my calculations. It means that in a perfect scenario you will have the ring increasing your damage two turns in a 14 turns cycle, or basically one turn every seven. About which damage is actually increasing, I want to remember that this is not multiplicative of all the damage that you will normally deal in that specific turn where the ring is active. So don't be fooled by the description, expect between 6% to 10% gain in damage dealt from this item when it's active. Differently from the coin, being swarmed will not give you an increase in activation chance because it's all based on you normally attacking a target. The Karwax War Drums grants you a 10% chance to restore two nearby allied troops 50 rage. The effect can trigger at most once every 3 seconds. Again, this means that this item in a perfect scenario is active a bit less than 10% of the time. In this case, between 8% and 9% of the time. Like for the ring, the 10% chance will not raise in case you get swarmed because the effect is based off your normal attacks and your normal attacks only and not the opponents. The Seth Skull has the same concept of the Karwax War Drums. Attacks have a 10% chance to grant your troops and two nearby allies, so three troops in total, a 10% increase attack for three turns. The effect can trigger once every three seconds, so this is a match one to one between the effect being active and the cooldown period. The Concealed Dagger. Probably my favorite accessory. Attacks have a 30% chance to reduce the target's health by 5%. Stacks up to 3 times, with each stack lasting 3 seconds, and there is no cooldown to this. I have already made a video about the dagger's mechanic, feel free to watch that card up on the top, but I will recap it here very shortly as well, so you can save this video and rewatch it later if you have doubts on any of the accessories. The daggers can stack, but not in the amount of health debuffed to the target, but in how fast you can achieve that. I'll explain myself better. If two daggers are swarming an objective, each troop swarming that objective has a 30% chance to apply one stack. This effectively means that if you have more daggers, you can reach the three stacks debuff much quicker. Let's understand this graphically. The function is 
1 minus 0.7 at x power multiplied by 100 to obtain the percentage where x is the number of daggers you are using to swarm the objective. Like we did for the coin, let's analyze the intersection points between the straight lines and the curve. And you can see that one dagger gives you 30% chance to apply one stack, like we would expect, two daggers rise this percentage to 51%, so you have one on two chance to apply at least one stack on the target on that turn, three daggers 65.7%, four daggers 76%, etc. Ten daggers will give you about 97% chance to apply at least one stack per turn when swarming at structures, making it virtually impossible for the target to remove the minus 15% health debuff after three turns, unless you use a commander like Theodora or Kuzunoki to clear the malus. You got the point. Well, I think that more than three or four daggers on a structure will lead you to diminishing returns anyway. Take that in consideration, you might want to craft something else at that point. The Mora's web is the exact copy of the dagger on a mechanical standpoint. Attacks have a 30% chance to reduce the target's defense by 4% and the march speed of cavalry units by 8%. Stacks up to 3 times, with each stack lasting for 3 seconds. I will not show you the graphic again, the one I showed you for the dagger, because it's exactly the same. For me, it's a great item and very underestimated. I personally have the dagger, I crafted it, and the second one I will craft as support player, which I I am is exactly this one, the Mora's Web. Let's now analyze the interesting epic accessories. Starting from the Silent Trial, normal attacks can decrease the target's rage by 10 points. Nothing to explain really, if not that this item can stack up. So if you for example swarm a structure with 5 of those, each turn the rage is going to be reduced by 50 points, 10 for each Silent Trial. The Delane's amulet is very interesting as well, reducing the counterattack damage by 5%. I will mostly prefer this item on a commander that has a very high attack, so the counterattack that you receive back from the enemy according to the damage you deal is going to be reduced a bit. Guan Yu and Alex is a good example of where to have this item. Finally, the Ancient Stratagems, one of the very last accessories to be released on Rise of Kingdoms. It will give you plus 3% troop capacity and it's universally good on any commander in my opinion. Remember that more troops equal to more damage. This bonus of course applies to the number of units that your city hall consents you to have on your march. If the city hall is at max level, 25, it means that you will be able to bring 200,000 troops, plus 3% from the ancient stratagem for a total of 206,000. If you are VIP 14 and above, 216,000. With a 50% army expansion, 316,000. As you can see, it does not change basing on the other expansion bonuses that you have. It's always going to increase the basic number of troops that your city hall allows you to battle with. Now, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to speak about the other items, like the Peter Sickle, the Bard's Pendant, the Crimson Ring, the Wind Scars, the Savage Totem, the Lower's Bow Necklace, and the Call of the Loyal, because I think that the effect is pretty straightforward, and I will honestly be insulting your intelligence if I stay here for another 5 minutes for a bit of extra revenue, pretending to explain basically nothing. Remember, this video has chapters and you can click on them anytime, they are in the description down below in case you want to go back and listen to the explanation of a particular accessory one more time. In the description you will also find all my links, consider joining our discord where I post a lot of interesting stuff when I have time and there is a wonderful community of 12,000 people waiting for you and ready to help you out in case you have any questions. Also, consider dropping a like on this video if it was helpful to you and subscribe, activating the bell for notifications if you want to see more analysis. Thank you for being here, as always, I will see you on the next one. Ciao!